sometimes crazy people can take over shit. That's what it is. Like, regular people, we, I don't know, you just never say shit. You ever notice that? Like, you can be on a bus, 30 decent people, one crazy dude can take over the whole bus, right? Everybody's just sitting there, everything's great, then one crazy, ah, fuck it, just starts screaming. And the second that happens, all 30 people are like, ah, God, everybody's like up against them. Does he got hepatitis? Everybody's freaking out. It's like, why does everybody just pounce on the dude? I think every regular person should just have like a chloroform rag, like right in their front shirt pocket. And the second any crazy shit happens, if you're behind it, it's on you. You just pull it out, you take the guy down. Everybody jumps on him, you tie him up. And you tattoo possibly the next Hitler across his forehead. You keep an eye on him, right? No, but it's so hard. It's just hard to speak up. That's the shit, you know? Like I was in a Target the other day, right? Not bragging. You know? Now what? Now I'm standing there with a buddy of mine, right? He's a bouncer. He's a bouncer in this really like crazy bar, so he knows like all these scumbags. And it just so happens that one of them just so happens to come walking through the target. So my buddy goes to wave to him, like, hey man, how's it going? And rather than this guy being like, ah, oh, you know, it's going pretty good, he just launches into this tirade about like like immigrants right in the middle of the target. He's like, how's it going? Tell you how it's going. These goddamn Mexicans keep coming to this country, taking all the fucking jobs. Immediately, everybody in line, like, ooh, Eminem, let's be the back of these for a while. Oh, wow, look at that glucose. Is he still there? I'm not looking. I looked the last time. It's your turn to look. I am not looking. You just look. This guy was going off. Nobody did shit. Include me. Include me. I wasn't looking at the guy. Even the people who worked at Target, they just kept ringing stuff up, like, ooh, three socks for a dollar. That's amazing. Think it's going to rain out? Well, I think that is a fitting intro into this podcast. Um, I wasn't even going to give you guys a uh, a podcast today um, because I am a little bit busy, but I was on Twitter. Surprise, surprise. And, uh, you know, something caught my interest. <clears throat> no, it's not the, the fact that we have yet another school shooting and that... Uh, you know, instead of actually doing something, uh, you know, the the uh, powers that be have, you know, they're sending their hopes and prayers uh, as if that fucking means anything at this point. But no, I'm not going to talk about that or maybe I'll talk about it, but it's not the main focus and it's not about the um, the the fucking the incident at Starbucks where um, somebody ordered uh, I don't know what they're at, you know, f- they ordered some fucking drink and the barista, or as I like to call them, the coffee fucking monkey, um, fucking wrote a racial slur, I guess the, I guess the gentleman was, uh, of Latin descent and they put the name on the cup as Beaner and of course everybody's, uh, <coughs> you know, throwing a shit fit over it. You know, as they should, but I'm kind of, you know, I'm at this point, if you're still buying shit from fucking Starbucks after it was, after it had been released that they use, uh, slave labor to fucking harvest their beans. If you're still buying something from fucking Starbucks after what happened with the two black gentlemen, um, and if you're standing in line sending a fucking tweet while at Starbucks about how racist Starbucks is, you can just go fuck yourself because you're not really that angry at all. It's just, you know, it's just like everything else on social media. It's just like, you know, a bunch of fucking, um, uh, what's the word? Um, ah, God damn it. What's the fucking word? I don't know where, you know, you're trying to show everybody how uh, concerned you are, even though you're not really, there's a fucking term from it for it. And I, I use it all the fucking time, but I'm drawing a fucking blank, um, virtue signaling. That's the, that's what I'm trying to think of. You know, it's just a bunch of fucking virtue signaling. Like always, um, I haven't, when I found out Starbucks uses prison labor, which was like months ago. I stopped fucking, you know, I I haven't bought anything from Starbucks since because I think that's kind of fucked up, you know, 
I can't fucking, you know, I mean, I don't know about you. Yeah, yeah, it was hard to, to sort of move on from Starbucks. And actually, I started making my own coffee. And it's, you know, I'm, I can make it the way I want. Yeah, it's not fucking Starbucks. But, you know, it, it's not like it tastes like shit. I know how to make fucking coffee. But I just, you know, as much as I miss that fucking liquid uh, candy bar, um... I just, I can't, I can't fucking, I can't put money into some shit like that. And the fact that people are still buying fucking Starbucks and now, and, you know, and they're complaining about it and, you know, and Starbucks is going to release some fucking bullshit apology about how oh, this is not uh, congruent with, uh, with our uh, corporate fucking motto or whatever, you know, even though it just fucking happened, uh, you know, like a month ago. You know, and people are going to be satisfied by it because some other fucking issue will come up. And, you know, it's just, it's all a bunch of fucking horse shit. So, you know, I just, I don't take that shit serious anymore. You know, what, what, like, like, here's the thing that, that fucking, it makes me laugh. And I know I said I wasn't going to talk about this. What makes me fucking laugh, right, is when the shit happened to those two black gentlemen uh, you know, everybody was fucking upset, right? That, oh, you know, this is so fucking racist. And, you know, and when Starbucks said that they were going to do like two days of fucking, uh, you know, rach- racial sensitivity training or whatever, people mocked the fuck out of it, right? But then you'll have somebody of a different nationality. And this happens with everything, right? Um, somebody uh, that's of a, dish- uh, of a different ethnicity, not nationality, because, you know, for all living in the United States, then we're all American, but, um, somebody of a different ethnicity outside of white, um, they'll still continue to patronize, uh, the establishment or whatever it is. And then they get all fucking like shocked and like, Oh, please come fucking defend me. Uh, you know, because now it's happening to me. I mean, that's just typical of everybody. I'm not, you know, this isn't taking pot shots at, uh, at Latin people. This happens with everyone. White people do this shit too, right? They, you know, they seem to have no problem whatsoever, uh, with, with some of their own, uh, being racist and rude and whatever. But the minute it's done to them, you know, they act like, uh, you know, I don't know, like it's a fucking crisis. And the thing is, it's not, you know, it's not just, um, you know, it's not just one group of people that, that does this. Everybody fucking does this. My point, uh, which I don't even really know what it is at this point, but, but my point is, is basically, look, if, if a company does something horrific like this, your fucking Twitter or social media fucking protests aren't going to do a goddamn thing if you're still buying the product, you fucking idiots. These people don't give a fuck that you're upset on social media. They're still making fucking profits. The only way to affect these people, whether it's Starbucks or it's Nike, or it's uh, fucking Amazon, or <clears throat> Apple, or whatever. The only way to convince them to change their ways is you stop putting money in their fucking pockets, you idiots. Now, I know I'm not talking, or I know that the people that listen to me on a regular basis, I know you're not idiots, I know this. Because if you're listening to me, if you are a regular listener, not just somebody that, that happened to land on this, not that I'm shitting on uh, those people either, but I get the feeling that you sort of feel the same way that I do. So, you know, I'm really just, I don't know, preaching to the fucking choir over here. But, um, but yeah, fucking uh, fuck Starbucks. And if you're still buying there, buying from there, then don't, then just keep your fucking mouth shut when it happens again. I mean, it's like, what is it going to take to get you fucking people out of there? Are they going to have to like burn a cross or, uh, you know, put somebody in a fucking oven or change the symbol to a fucking, uh, swastika. I mean, what are they going to have to do before you fucking realize that, uh, your little social media protests aren't going to do shit. You know, like I'm, I'm fucking, like, I'm, I'm burnt out on all of the bullshit. And I know I've said this, uh, you know, a gazillion fucking times, but 
it's just like everybody pretends like like the answers to these fucking problems are so complicated they're so complex and how are we gonna fucking do it and and all it really takes is just a little bit of fucking uh discipline right you know like the people that <clears throat> that complain about how amazon uh you know when they come into a a, a state or or neighborhood they basically shut down all of the brick and mortar type of um of stores right the family owned stuff right they they come in and they just basically push them all out and you hear lots of people complaining about oh you know amazon they're they're such this like super fucking uh predatory capitalistic uh uh company and and they're horrible and jeff bezos is a piece of shit and you know i agree but then they'll fucking still uh, you know, buy shit off of Amazon and use their fucking, prime, you know, Amazon Prime accounts and all that fucking horse shit. And it's just like, dude, shut the fuck up. Like at this time, I, or at this point, I'm just, I'm sick of all the phony fucking, uh, uh, you know, online fucking activists that, you know, you're really all you're, mo- all you're concerned about is how many fucking likes or retweets or followers or whatever, or thumbs up or fucking, you know, that's all you really fucking care about. You don't actually care about changing anything or else you would fucking do it, you know, <clears throat> but anyway, I, I fucking, I don't know how I got, I mean, I knew how I got here. You know, but this wasn't the purpose of this fucking podcast, like I said, or maybe I didn't say, I don't know. I've fucking started and restarted this podcast like three fucking times at this point. So I don't know what I've said and what I haven't said. I wasn't going to even do a podcast today because I am kind of busy, but you know, you know, I I fucking, I was on Twitter. I happened to read an article uh, from the New York times, which uh, before I even go forward with this shit, um, I want to just throw a disclaimer out there. I don't consider the the New York Times or really any sort of mainstream media source, whether it's on TV or in print, I don't consider them uh, reliable sources of information, mostly because they are bought and controlled by uh, corporate interests that, you know, will tell the best story about themselves that they possibly can. Right. But this particular article wasn't, <coughs> it wasn't like, you know, I don't know. I didn't take it as, as somebody trying to inform the public. It's just a sort of an account of, uh, of their day or day or two or week or month or whatever with a, uh, with a particular, um, popular person. And this particular article was about Jordan Peterson. Now, for those of you that don't know who Jordan Peterson is, he is, uh, He's considered like a uh, like a mainstream intellectual now because he took a stand because he's like a I think he he he's a, a psychology professor at the University of like Toronto or some shit and he caused a big stir stir back in t- uh, 2016 because he refused to abide by some law that was basically going to tell him that if somebody trans is in his class that he has to address them by whichever fucking pronoun uh they choose um now to some degree i i am on that fucking uh that side of the fence not in the if you're you know if you were born male but you consider yourself female not that extent my issues with the people are like, well, I identify as a fucking dwell or or an elf or a fucking dragon or some shit. Like, there's no fucking way I'm going to refer to you as a fucking dragon. I don't give a shit. You know, some things are just obviously fucking make believe, and I'm not gonna fucking do it. You know, like, <clears throat> like what is it? The uh, the pansexual, which is basically just somebody that's fucking bisexual. But for some reason, it's got a, it's got a new name, which, you know, like, if you really fucking think about it, like, what, what the fuck are we talking about? A pansexual means that they don't, that they basically have no, uh, no real preference. Well, that's kind of what a fucking bisexual is, isn't it? I mean, unless you're talking about, well, you feel like you should be able to have sex with animals, then, you know, then, then we're not really talking about, uh, anything other than you're just a fucking nut. 
you know, so in that respect, I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to refer to you as, as that shit. Okay. You're bisexual. You fucking don't care if the person, you know, what genitalia the person has, that is a bisexual calling it something else. Doesn't make it something else. But anyway, <clears throat> um, so yeah, he caused this big fucking stir because he didn't want to call, but on, at least as far as I know, now I could be wrong here, but his thing was that, you know, if biologically you were born a male, but you're now calling yourself female, like he's not going to fucking do it. You know, he's going to base what he calls you on your biology, which is really just code for I'm a huge dick. Okay. Um, so yeah, on some degree, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm on the same fucking side as, as side as him, but on another, it's like, dude, you know, like how much fucking energy is it going to take for you to, to, to put up that fucking fight? You know, if the person wants to be called a, a you know, a, a female, if they're really a male, well, who, you know, is it really going to like, what is it going to do to you? To just be like, all right, her or she. I mean, you know, it's 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 just different fucking sounds coming out of the uh, the hole in your head. You know, so really, he's just choosing to be a dick, right? But for some reason, he has been uh, hoisted up on onto uh, to fucking uh, the male soldiers, the patriarchy, and I don't like using that fucking word because it sounds like some feminism bullshit. Um, he is basically, uh, you know, he's, he's been made famous because he has, you know, he's refused to adapt to, uh, to just how shit is nowadays. And in some ways you, you, you know, you have to commend him for it. But in others, it's like, dude, you know, you're just throwing a fucking temper tantrum, you know? So I don't really consider him a intellectual he's a pseudo intellectual but in reality he's just a, he's a fucking charlatan he is the male version or he's not the male version he's like an intelligent version of fucking pewdiepie that's all he fucking is and he's made a name for himself by saying some outlandish shit and because it got him a little bit of fame he's decided to continue on with it but for those of you who are like, oh no, you just you've been you've been tricked, you've been bamboozled by by the the feminists. Just listen to the shit that you know, this little fucking conversational blurb from this article about his perspective on things. Okay, and you tell me at the uh, when I'm fucking done if this sounds like somebody that isn't a fucking nut job. All right. Um, they were talking about, to give you a little lead into the blurb that I'm talking about, uh, um, he is, uh, they were talking about the, the so-called patriarchy and, um, you know, and his, uh, reference to lobsters and how they have a defined patriarchy and, you know, but. Uh, in human society, we're, uh, we're slowly but surely collapsing that patriarchy. And he, you know, he's really just upset about it. He's basically just an angry fucking guy that's just, you know, he's the equivalent of the, of the old man standing out on his fucking porch in his, uh, in a wife beater and his fucking tidy whities screaming at the, the kids for walking on his fucking lawn. Um, that's basically all it is. All right. But, so they're talking about the patriarchy, and then uh, so the blurb here goes, Mr. Peterson illustrates his arguments with copious reference of uh, references to ancient myths. Now, already, I don't like the wording here because it's just, you know, it's it's like, oh, let me use the, the most fucking uh, smartest sounding fucking words I can think of. You know, he's trying, he or she is trying to be on his level, but... Regardless of that, you have to fucking, you know, well, let me just finish reading it to you. So Mr. Peters, Mr. Peterson illustrates his arguments with copious references to ancient myths, bringing up stories of witches, biblical allegories, and ancient traditions. I ask why these old stories should guide us today. He says, it makes sense that a witch lives in a swamp. Yeah. And then I guess this person says, why? It's a hard one. 
Right, that's right. You don't know. It's because those things hang together at a very deep level, right? Yeah, and it makes sense that an old king lives in a desiccated tower. But witches don't exist, and they don't live in swamps, I say. Yeah, they do. They do exist. They just don't exist the way you think they exist. They certainly exist. You may say, well, dragons don't exist. It's like, yes, they do. The category predator and the category dragon are the same category. It absolutely exists. It's a superordinate category. It exists absolutely more than anything else. In fact, it really exists. What exists is not obvious, you say. Well, there's no such thing as witches. Yeah, I know what you mean, but that isn't what you think when you go see a movie about them. You can't help but fall into these categories. There's no escape from them. Okay, if anybody <clears throat> can explain to me what the fuck he just said, uh, let me have it. Because to me, that sounded like some grade A Kanye West mixed with a little bit of fucking Trump craziness. The guy is arguing that fucking witches exist and dragons exist and they, they, they exist in some other fucking way that we can't or we're not capable of fucking uh, comprehending. But somehow he's capable. I mean, does anybody fucking find this guy uh, intelligent at all? I mean, I know that a lot of his uh, his fan base, you know, they develop their fucking love affair for him and Sam Harris and... Uh, uh, a couple of other people because, you know, they're fans of Joe Rogan's podcast and Joe Rogan has, uh, you know, Peterson and fucking Harris and all these people on his podcast on a regular fucking basis. And because Joe Rogan is, you know, he's very influenced by fucking craziness, it seems that, you know, somehow these guys have been lifted into the fucking, uh, into the sky on fucking people's, uh, you know, pedestals as being intelligent beings. But they just, to me, they sound like, they, they sound like fucking, uh, you know, like priests and pastors. It just sounds like fucking religious fucking mumbo jumbo where, you know, where it could be interpreted any fucking way. But, you know, in this particular instance, it's just, well, I'm more fucking, uh, you know, I'm higher or I'm, you know, more elevated uh, intellectually than you are. And that's why, you know, I fucking say witches and dragons exist, but not in the fucking typical way that you, uh, you imagine them to be. That's a bunch of fucking horse shit. Okay. Jordan Peterson, Sam Harris, uh, what the fuck, Dave Rubin, and um, the other fucking people that that get a regular slot on Joe Rogan's podcast. And this is not a slight to Joe Rogan because I listen to his podcast as well and enjoy it immensely. But just because, you know, I mean, here's the fucking funniest thing, right? This is what like the like if you're gonna dive deep into uh, into the to the uh, the mindset that a lot of these people get into, especially the ones that are huge fans of Jordan Peterson, is is they have this mindset that you know that um, you don't have to you know you don't have to follow people. It's okay to have your own opinions, which I 100% agree with. Except the irony is is that the people that fucking follow this guy and that, you know, quote Joe Rogan and, and Sam Harris and all these people, all they act like are, I mean, and I'm, I apologize it because I, I, you know, I assume that at least 50%, 60% of the people that are listening to this now are, you know, also fans of Joe Rogan, which is why I said I'm still a fucking huge fan of him. I don't watch or I don't listen anymore when he has Jordan Peterson and Sam Harris on, because I just don't feel like listening to three hours of bullshit. But the people that, that have lifted, you know, Peterson and Harris and uh, Rubin and even Donald Trump up onto their shoulders and held in this high regard as being fucking geniuses. And by the way, Jordan Peterson has, referred to Trump as a genius in his own right. He doesn't think he's like, you know, ready to fucking split the atom or anything. But, you know, the only, you know, these people that have put these guys on this pedestal have essentially become 
a bunch of fucking lemmings following somebody, you know, following snake oil salesmen that, you know, because, I mean, Jordan Peterson and Sam Harris, all of these guys, with the exception of Trump, uh, you know, they're very, uh, uh, what's the word, um, uh, Oh God! What the fuck is the word for it? They're you know they they um. God damn it! It's hard you know like it's hard to uh to take this stance if I can't even think of the fucking words I want to use. But you know they're they they speak very eloquently. You know they they make it seem like what they're saying is very fucking profound and 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 it makes it seem like oh I'm fucking opening your mind to this idea that because fucking lobsters exist in a uh, in a pay or in a hierarchy that therefore you know mankind should also respect that hierarchy because I can lift you know, a woman up and she can't lift me up. I mean, that's basically what it fucking boils down to. It's like, ooh, I'm strong enough to lift, to lift rock. You can't lift rock, so therefore I should be in charge. I mean, that is basically all it boils down to. Now, am I saying I want to exist in a world where, you know, women are in control? Uh, you know, I don't really give a fuck who's in control so long as they're not fucking out of their goddamn mind, so long as they're not fucking corrupted by, you know, by uh, corporations and and bullshit. Uh, You know, I just want somebody that can fucking, uh, you know, make the right decisions if, you know, if we must have a leader, which I find, you know, which, uh, you know, this is where I agree with, with uh, Joe Rogan here is like this idea that we need a fucking leader. It's, it's absurd. But if we must have one, I just want one that won't fuck everybody over and get us caught up into, uh, you know, a bunch of bullshit wars over some, you know, over somebody's uh, natural resources. You know, somebody that won't just shit on the fucking poor and, you know, you know, just somebody that's a fucking decent human being. That's all I really fucking want. Now, whether that person has a dick or a vagina, it doesn't fucking matter to me. But this idea that, oh, you know, because uh, he has balls and because he can lift weights, therefore he is superior. Get the fuck out of here. I mean, you know, yeah, you know, like, I'm a strong dude. I can, you know, I can lift a lot of weight. If I got into a fight against, uh, you know, fucking Rose Nama, I don't even know how to fucking say her name. The, uh, you know, the, the UFC chick. Like if I got in, into a fight with, uh, with, with any woman that's, you know, that's in MMA, I'm going to get my ass kicked, you know? So does that make me less of a fucking man because, you know, or, or does that make her more of a man because she was able to defeat me in a, you know, in, in a, in a fight? I mean, it's just, it's a bunch of fucking horse shit. It's a bunch of people that, you know, just refuse to adapt to change. You know, they, they yearn for the days when you could, uh, you know, smack a woman on her ass and fucking tweak her fucking nipple and, and, you know, and she just took it as a, as a sign of like, oh, they really like me, you know, like they just yearn for that type of shit. You know, yeah, a lot of it has gotten out of fucking control. You know, all of the goddamn pronouns and you know, people losing their shit over, uh, you know, if you, if you even fucking, uh, you know, disagree with a woman, I mean, you know, a lot of it has gone way out of fucking hand, but (coughs) a lot of these guys are really just, they just don't like the idea that things are fucking changing as old fucking cunts are prone to do. I mean, I myself, feel the same way about, you know, quite a few things. Like, you know, I just feel like, okay, like for example, right. <clears throat> um, uh, this lady attempted to give me shit because, um, because I, I, how can I say this? Um, I, I didn't, or like I, I kind of knocked my son down a peg in order to keep him humble. But she didn't take it as that because there's this new age uh, perspective on raising children where you must always, like you must treat them like they're made out of fucking glass and 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 everything they do is awesome and all of that other fucking horse shit. Well, I, I refuse to do that. 
to to my son, to my daughter. I don't, you know, I let them know that at the end of the day, yeah, I love you with everything inside me. But if, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to blow smoke up your ass and tell you you're fucking wonderful at something when you really kind of fucking suck, you know, and it was, it just so happened that, um, um, it was one of his fucking, uh, one of his baseball games, right? Um, for the longest time we have, you know, I've struggled with him to get him to really like put a hundred percent into what he's doing. Right. I constantly would tell him like, dude, even at practice, you need to, you need to behave or not behave, but you need to act like it's a game. You know, because that's the whole purpose of practice, right? To get better so that when you are playing the game, you know, you've improved. And for the longest time, he just sort of fucking was lackadaisical about shit. Now, you know, he finally has decided to to, to kick it up a notch. But, you know, um, the last couple of games, he has managed to, you know, score, uh, you know, a couple of doubles and you know, in a triple and, you know, quite a few, uh, RBIs and stuff, right. And, you know, he's feeling really good about himself and, you know, and, and I allow him to feel that way. But then this last game, um, he sort of reverted back to, uh, you know, sort of that, you know, kind of fucking lazy, you know, he wasn't swinging at shit that he should have swung at. He, uh, you know, would like watch you know if he's in the outfield he basically just watch the fucking ball go over his head rather than go for it he's you know just not really performing up to task right and he did it the the entire game then the last inning he managed to get a hit that got out right which is no big deal i don't you know i've never expected him to you know to be great the only thing i expect is that you participate and so you know after the game was over, he comes running out and he's all excited. He's like, Oh, did you see, I got the hit. And, you know, and there's of course other parents standing around us. And I was like, well, yeah, I saw the hit, but what, what about the rest of the fucking game? I mean, I say fucking, but you know, what about the rest of the game? You fucking stank. You know, you weren't even trying. And, you know, I'm, I'm being the sort of father that I think, you know, a kid needs right? If, if I'm just going to say, oh yeah, it's great that, you know, the entire game you fucked off, but you know, at the very last minute you decided, to, you know, I'm not going to be that. Cause what is that going to fucking teach him? That it's okay to half ass shit. And I let him know. And there was some lady like, oh, why can't you just celebrate his, uh, his accomplishments? Why do you gotta, you know, and, and it, and it was just like, lady, go fuck yourself. You know, you might want to raise your fucking sons and daughters to, to you know, you, you want to raise them convinced that they're just awesome at every fucking everything and that, you know, that it's it's okay to put, you know, as least amount of fucking effort into the shit that you do, you know, as you want. But, you know, I'm, that, I'm not raising fucking little bitches. You know what I mean? I'm not, you know, I'm trying to prepare him for fucking reality. What you're doing is you're keeping them in a fucking bubble of fantasy, and and it's one that will pop immediately when they get a dose of fucking reality, right? <clears throat> Am I saying that my way of parenting is the best way? No, but it's the but it is my I don't know my homage to maintaining some degree of old school shit. I don't think you should baby your children. I don't think you should fucking abuse them or, or do a lot of the shit that was done to me as a kid. Obviously, you know, you got to fucking make tweaks on the way you parent. But this this newfound just blow smoke up their ass and make them feel good about it. Fuck that. That is that isn't realistic. OK, not everything you do is fucking fantastic. Some things you suck at. You know. And I, you know, I, I talk to him all the time. Like she catches that part of the conversation, but she doesn't, you know, she's not there when I'm like, you know, yeah, I might've tore him down a little bit, but you know, I, when we got home, I built him back up. Right. I told him that, you know, like, I know you can do this. You've proven the last uh, few games that, you know, you can be a real force, a real, uh, uh, benefit to your team. So, yeah, it disappoints me when I see you sort of slack off 
And yeah, I'm not going to, you know, yeah, it's great that you got a hit at the very last minute, but what would have been if you would put more effort in be, uh, before that? I mean, you know, what I've, what I haven't mentioned is the score of the game. Uh, the score was, I believe it was 14 to nothing. And it wasn't his team that had the 14. Okay. You know, whatever. I don't know why I'm fucking trying to justify this shit to you, but I'm, but I, you know, I guess what I'm getting at is that, yeah, there are some, you know, I'm, I'm no different than some of these guys that yearn for a day, you know, a, a day that's fucking past. But at the same time, I realized like, okay, you know, not everything can be the way it used to be. And that, yeah, I must fucking adapt to some degree. Am I going to, uh, you know, raise my children like, <clears throat> like they're fucking superstars at everything? No, because that's unrealistic. Do I praise them when they do accomplish things? Do I, you know, do I, uh, w you know, always f work on building up their self-esteem? Absolutely. But I'm not going to bullshit them. And I think that's probably one of the big reasons that, uh, you know, that, that, that our fucking society is beginning to crumble because you have all these people that have been told that they're fucking great, you know, and they're realizing they're fucking not. And I mean, or you're, you you've got like, like with this social media thing, even with this fucking podcast, right? You know, there's, I, there's this idea that we all need to be heard now, that our opinions need to be shared, that what we have to fucking say is so fucking important, and it isn't. The shit I'm saying on this podcast, it isn't fucking important. It's important to me. I would hope it's important to you, but I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to fool myself into thinking that you're sitting over there fucking uh, taking notes. You know, I'm not fucking Jesus over here. I'm just some fucking jackass on a microphone sitting on his fucking couch in the middle of the fucking afternoon. You know, I don't know. But yeah, anyway, fucking Jordan Peterson, you know, the dude's a fucking, uh, dude's a fucking charlatan. You know, yeah, he speaks eloquently, but he is full of shit. <coughs> you know, absolutely full of shit. Oh boy. Is there anything else I want to fucking talk about? Nah, I don't think so. So yeah, I'm gonna end it here. It's a it's a well it's not even a short one. I think I think uh you know this is this is about average, about half an hour, forty minutes or whatever. But um for those of you that are new to the podcast, I uh you know, I do a couple of these a week usually. Um, usually it's Tuesdays and Thursdays. Occasionally, you know, I do, uh, I give you a little extra and, you know, on occasion I only give you one. It just really depends on how my schedule is, uh, is going. But this week I gave you two. Um, and, um, yeah. So if you are new, welcome. If you've been uh, a listener, uh, you know, previously, then, uh, you know, thanks for your fucking support. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. I hope you have a good weekend. I, uh, it is fucking Friday. So, uh, you know, for those of you that don't work on the fucking weekends, uh, you know, you can relax in a few fucking hours. And for those of you that have to work during a weekend, you should have made better life choices. I'm just fucking with you. Anyway, don't, uh, like always, don't take any shit and go fuck yourself. Peace.